Welcome everyone here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some War Mothers Tiana. This is definitely a really fun deck like where we're ramping into War Mothers Call and trying to get a bunch of Tianas in play. Um, but we have a huge top end here. When we've played this deck in the past, we have used, like we really need to ramp and get, like try to have five mana on turn four so we can play all these awesome five drops starting on turn four with Averroes and Hearthguard, Garen, Radiant Guardian, Swiftwing Lancer. There's a lot of them. So we've been using Catalyst of Aeons and Mobilize. And the Mobilize has looked, actually has looked pretty good. But with the new patch that came out this week, now Weirding Stones is an 04, and Weirding Stones is starting to look a lot better as an 04. And so we're gonna try out Weirding Stones here instead of the Mobilizes, because Weirding Stones fits our curve perfectly. So we can play the Stones on turn three, or the Catalyst on turn three, and then on turn five, we'll have, or sorry, on turn four, we'll have five mana. So we'll start being able to play these all these cards starting on turn four. And that's exactly what we want to do. So yeah, and, and then uh, the Weirding Stones also, um, you know, gets you that extra uh, mana gem, which is really uh, important for Anivia. So we can use Weirding Stones and the Catalyst of Aeons and ramp up for Anivia and try to get enlightened very fast. Of course, um, the Weirding Stones is something that we will be obliterated by the She Who Wanders. But at that point, whenever we we're, we have 10 mana and we're casting She Who Wanders, you know, that means we'll be enlightened. We probably don't need the Weirding Stones anymore at that point. Um, the one kind of negative about the Weirding Stones is it's a really terrible card to hit off of War Mother's Call. I think that's just the way it is. I think, I think we just go with it. But... Um, yeah, you know, it's it's not one that we really want to hit, but oh well. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we have a, a pretty sweet ramp deck here, and yeah, hopefully we can play a bunch of Tianas and catch our opponents off guard. So let's do that. All right, we got a Garen deck. Let's place, let's use our Garen board. We haven't used the Garen board in a while. And then let's use a Poro. All right, so this is War Mother's Tiana. Yeah, so the Mage Seeker is something that just chump blocks for us early and then gets us an expensive spell. Sometimes we get like Ruination, but you know, like our deck's all about ramping and you know using you know using Weirding Stones, Catalyst, and ramping, and so we should have a lot of mana and we should be able to play like those powerful spells, and so Mage Seeker helps us with that. Having a one drop to chump block is really nice also with a Catalyst of Aeons deck, because on turn three, you could have six total mana. So you could you can cast your Catalyst that costs five, and you could have had one extra mana. So you can still play a one drop, and then nothing on turn two, and Catalyst on turn three. Um, and so, so Mage Seeker fits well there. All right, well, Garen Fior, well, let's not keep these, and actually, we don't really need the Sentry either. Sentry could just give my opponent something really easy to kill with Fiora. Alright, so we'll have Weirding Stones on three, Swiftwing Lancer on four. And since we're not playing anything on turn two, we'll be able to play Swiftwing Lancer with single combat backup as well. That's pretty nice. Problem is, we're going to take a lot of damage this turn. Especially if they have a Fiora. It's already five. At Fiora, it's eight. Protege, so seven. I mean, I guess it's possible they just pass back and just skip their attack. Just skip, just leave seven points of damage on the on the table. So 
Some pretty epic music for our deck. If I if I pass back, it's not like I'm making them waste their mana because they don't have spell mana banked anyway. If I play another Weirding Stones... I've got your back. Let your sight protect me. Hey, say moi. If we play another Weirding Stones here, if we get to untap with both Weirding Stones, we will have eight mana next turn for the Crown Guard, but we're not... don't really have anything to do with the Crown Guard, though. Almeida. Hello. <clears throat> Alright, let's just have these fight so we just don't take the damage. Yeah, we talked talked about that a bunch earlier. Yes, yes, Weirding Stones is bad to hit off of War Mother's Call, but besides that, I think it does a whole lot more for us than mobilize for every everything else. Yeah, you know, like imagine if our hand was just like some mobilizes with this, this would have been pretty pretty poor. Now oh, they're just having these fight. Should I fight? Fight Blade Keeper. Is it actually better to kill the four three, or is it better to kill their own Blade Keeper? The thing's just gonna turn back into a two three. Three, two. Vanguard first blade. Date here. Four nine. There we go. Many under one a... Playing the Tiana just doesn't really fit. Right now, but there we go. Like the Mage Seeker Conservator grabbed a harrowing. That that could do some stuff. Today we fight as one. That can definitely do some stuff for us. So because of the Weirding Stones, we will be able to play War Mother's Call this next turn. Right? Let's see, we'll have 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, if I do not play single combat, we could play War Mother's Call. We may actually have to play Harrowing to block though. Especially if they go for Demacia. How many allies have I actually had die? I've only had two allies die, though. Um, I do want to single combat and fight. But then I can't. War Mother's Call. 
we should War Mother's Call. Yeah, we should definitely War Mother's Call. Because we're we can survive. All of our stuff's gonna die. We can survive. And then we start, we just kind of keep building with War Mother's Call. Yeah, Weirding Stones is an early blocker, and then also just getting getting mana gems is more valuable than reducing the cost of a couple of uh, things in your hand. Uh, especially when you have like a Nivea and everything. The, the mana stones are, are pretty valuable. But yeah, I, I like this card more than... It's just more consistent than Mobilize. Oh, gross. Gross. Well, maybe we won't survive. They had a second single combat. No, we're not going to survive now. Dang. close. That was turn seven. I mean, we we cast War Mother's Call on turn seven, but still took lethal. By one point also. I guess technically it was by two, by two points. Like, they could have dealt 12 damage to me. And that was at 11. Zed Katarina Draven. Alright, let's get rid of the Anivia, and I'll keep the Lancer. Lancer could be pretty nice at challenging these things. Yeah, that was an ouch. I thought we were going to be able to survive. I thought we were. I thought we were, but not quite. Why do their creatures not die to my sweeper, but my creatures die to my sweeper? Basically making it so the Draven dies to the Avalanche. Now that thing will die to the Avalanche. Also... Would love for them to play something. Uh, first. Um, so right now we have six. Next turn we could have eight. Plus this extra. Uh, eight, nine, ten. See, what can I do with eight? And then plus that extra one would be nine, so I'd be able to avalanche Radiant Guardian.
Yeah, so my, my plan next turn is Avalanche Radiant Guardian. Avalanche killing the Weirding Stones. I guess we didn't have to block with Weirding Stones. I, I can play the Mage Seeker Conservator and kill the Mage Seeker Conservator. I uh, shouldn't have blocked here. I guess we could just Radiant Guardian this turn. <clears throat> That's not bad either. I was thinking I was going to be Catalysting. This works out. This works out. Two. Hmm. Or it would have worked out. If it weren't for those meddling kids. Obviously, they have the spinning axes to just make this a trade, but still getting Zed out of here is important. And, you know, they can. Uh, I guess Twin Disciplines doesn't save Zed. Hard to set up. What? They just didn't even. What? So they didn't use spinning axes to kill my 5 1? Judgment's really hard to set up, but yeah, I mean, I could see playing, could see playing a Judgment for sure, but it is pretty hard to set up whenever you're behind. It's, it... kind of counting on that five life. Alright, so now next turn we will be enlightened. And uh, so this Anivia looks pretty good. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right, Seymour. I think I think my opponent thought that the Blade's Edge from Katarina was going to cost zero mana. This music is so epic. Well, 
I'm down to 10. Now we're using those. I'd rather, yeah, I know we're, yeah, I could have blocked with the stones because we're at full mana now, but I'd rather see what we get with the Conservator. Yeah, if we're, if we're sacrificing one of them. I thought the Anivia was a free block. And so it didn't block with the Anivia. I figured that one was a free block. But wanted to see what kind of spell we could get with the other one. Oh, can we set up... Can we set up Radiant Guardian? Let's say, can we set up Radiant Guardian single combat? But kind of scared of the Straven. Hmm. Yeah, that Draven's acting pretty scary. Still have four mana now. That was pretty great. That transfusion twin di twin disciplines turn. I mean, I guess R Winter's Breath isn't really even safe either because they have all these plus ones. I mean, Radiant Guardian doesn't protect against Draven. Very well. Quick attack. Quick attack and overwhelm. No, I mean, no, we can't, we can't block Draven with these little things. Come on, as overwhelm. Yeah, we can't. So, like, that's, that's the problem. If I Winter's Breath, it could still grow a little bit. Sorry. Uh. I think it is Winter's Breath over the Radiant Guardians. They can, you know, they have enough for like three damage of those, right? One damage go across, or like, you know, two. <clears throat> yeah, whenever Draven levels up, he gets overwhelmed. That's what. That's what. That's why. Yeah, he gets real good whenever he levels up. Hopefully this takes out Draven. Finally. Yes. Get Draven out of here. So I, I didn't, you know, I want to play Tiana. Here, just in case. That's why I was thinking play Tiana.
Be able to get another Anivia attack in. <laughs> I, I never... I've never had him level because I always keep him on a removal list with... Vermontal removal with my Draven list. <laughs> yeah. That's like the secret overwhelm. So yeah, that, that's what made that, that combat tough was that overwhelm. Of just playing the Radiant Guardians. Because they could have like the Draven do damage first and then the Katarina do damage and... I guess I could have played Tiana also last turn. Wow, what a good draw. So they have something to give this elusive. We have the Harsh Winds for protection. What a good draw. Perfect. So if we, if we need to keep Harsh Winds up, we got seven mana. So I can play one of these things. I guess that's Cytheria. Only does double damage to the Nexus, not to normal units. got this. <clears throat> Definitely think we have this. That was a great game. First game was pretty good, too. Both, our, both these games have been super, super close. One we lost, one we won. GG's. I think Swain's real good. Yeah, just just read Swain earlier uh, in the stream. Yeah, I think Swain's real good. All right, we'll keep single combat because we may like we'll probably need single combat to kill Ash. Probably. Besides that, we need some ramp. We're gonna need to just keep five drops. Our deck's filled with five drops. Oh, is the trailer awesome? Oh, I didn't see a trailer. I'll check that out later. Alright, these even though these stones are pretty weird, they do exactly what we want. Oh, I could catalyst also, but I think stones is where where it's at. Cause stones either way we have five we have five mana next turn. But with stones we'll have five mana next turn plus There it goes. I was like, aren't we supposed to have five? Plus the two for single combat, so we can play Garen and have single combat up. Um. For justice, for Demacia. For Demacia. Well, you block that thing, and you block this thing. Okay. 
Okay, I can maybe do something. Ah, uh, should have blocked Ash. Wow, should have blocked Ash. Dang. Whoops. I know, I know. It's not a great trade. We just kind of have to do it. I was one mana short of being able to play War Mother's Call this turn anyway. If I don't play, if I didn't play it. Probably bad for me. If I played Weirding Stones, I couldn't play War Mother's Call. I could only do one of the two. And Weirding Stones this past turn, it would have had me be enlightened, but we would only had eleven mana and we needed twelve. Cool. Mage Seeker Conservator. Could have been a lot better. But I guess we get you. But we get another thing before they attack. Don't have removal. What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't play removal. No. No, don't have removal. No. Can't deal with removal right now. Now they have lethal. Couldn't deal with that removal. If only I would have just blocked. Like this, that game would have been a whole lot different if I would have just blocked Ash. I mean, that was the, the big mistake I, I did there. You know, if I would have just blocked Ash, we would have been able to play the Avalanche to kill the Ash earlier, keep our Garen in play, keep the single combat for something else. That was a, a huge, huge mistake, not blocking Ash. Mediogre! Victory not guaranteed. Uh, that is true. <laughs> Thank you, Garen Ogre. Seven awesome months. Thanks for that resub. Oh, that's actually our first sub of the day. I forgot I had this. I never updated the sub goal. <clears throat> yeah, if, if Stone dies, the extra mana goes away. If Weirding Stones dies. All right, so <clears throat> looking for ramp. You know, if we would have had ramp in hand, I would have maybe kept the, the average Rosen card, but um, this is Karina control. They can go wide with spiders pretty well. 
And so I want to... Uh, yeah, I want to keep the avalanche. Alright. I didn't really want to play the Conservator before the avalanche. But, I don't know. I guess we will, since we got nothing else. All right, well, it's still six, you know, cards are still six to six, and they have two, you know, they have one extra mana than I do. <clears throat> so we're not doing, but, like, we're still at 17, and we're gone to turn five where we start getting to play our five drops, so. <clears throat> you know, we should hopefully have some more power. No, Sky, I don't have a, I don't have a PlayStation 4, so I can't get the Final Fantasy VII remake. And... No, I've heard it's great, though. I wish I could. But. I think I'm willing to make this trade. I'm willing to trade that and then, you know, Mystic Shot. Uh, thermogenic Beam. Sure. You know, it's two for one. We got another Garen. Play this first, depending on what they play. Maybe I'll play Lancer to challenge it. No. <laughs> you already have 50 hours in for Final Fantasy VII, the new one. That's awesome, though. I'm jealous. Yes, I will, Mediogre. Yep, I, sh I sure will. And I, I responded to your YouTube comment about that a little bit ago. Um, yeah, I'm going to have... I will be... Um, yeah, I'll be going through and talking about all the cards of the new set whenever we know all of them. Unfortunately, She Who Wanders is, is actually not that good in this matchup, and so it's, it's kind of unfortunate that we drew both of them. This is not that good of a matchup for it. Yeah, it's always cost 10. Like, they, they actually don't have, like, you know, so... Obliterate all followers with four or less power in play. They actually and in hands. They actually really don't have that. They have like frenzied skitter, and that's about it. So unfortunately, this is not a good she who wanders matchup. This is a really good War Mother's Call matchup. Like, that's the card, you know, we have two She Who Wanders, two War Mother's Calls. I would much, much rather have War Mother's Calls right now. That's the card I need. Unfortunately, we drew the two I don't want and not the two that I do want, not just one of each. Um, yeah, this thing's pretty annoying to deal with, that's for sure.
Well, that was pretty gross, all those cards. None of those are good. really need War Mother's Call and go wide and have Anivia's and stuff like that. Just really have the wrong half of our deck. These cards do not help. them to, to block with Ledros anyway, because like if they're if they're gonna play Ledros the next turn anyway, might as well put both Ledroses back in their hand, like where they're only playing one. And maybe try to keep killing it. Ooh, okay. Alright, so we gotta save two mana. So I'm gonna play Avalanche. So that's four. I like gain life. I don't know yet. win this game. I guess I need Radiant I need Radiant Guardians, don't I? I need Radiant Guardians fast. Or you give me something good. Alright. Ritual of Renewal, it is. Ready for deployment. Oh, come on. That's mean. But yeah, She Who Wanders. <laughs> Ten mana card that does nothing. Where their 9 mana card is completely amazing and wins the game for them. So, you know, that's that's kind of our deck. Um, yeah, the She Who Wanders looked horrible. Where Commander Ledros looked amazing. Can keep both of these. Yeah, keep that. Probably not. Well then, we got our five drops. Come on, ramp spell. Yuck. Need ramp spell. Um. Yeah, I'll have to. I'll have to take a look. There, it's possible there's some expensive spells that could replace She Who Wanders for sure. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly off the top of my head how to kind of go look at the collection. See what we got. Perfect. Do that right in time.
Use Judgment and Harsh Winds. Yeah, those are those are good. Yeah, those are definitely good defensive cards. Um, I know there's another great finisher if we need another great finisher. It's like blocking is good, but then blocking doesn't turn on Hearth Garden. Or sorry, doesn't turn on Raiding Guardian. Oh dang. Avalanche could be nice. I want to play all three of these five drops. I want to play them all. Like they're all great. I want to play all of them. And I want to. And I want to Avalanche. I want to do it all. Which one is the best out of them? I don't know. They're all great. They're all great. Let's play Garen. Uh, yeah, I guess I could, yeah, uh, Trind- no, no, yeah, because we have Garen- yeah, so no, we can't have more champions, because we have Garen to go along with, um, Garen and Anivia, so that's our, that's our six champions. Eh, I'm not, I'm not really big on Trindamir, honestly. Not very big on Trindamir. Callista bring like Callista Mist Wraith is pretty nice. Callista's gonna bring back Mist Wraith with attacking. Maybe that avalanche is just really bad. Potentially. Very likely that avalanche was just really bad. Okay, certainly. No. 100% that avalanche was really bad. Thrash, really? Come on. This challenger my life steal. All right. Well, that avalanche was really bad. That would have been a great matchup for Sheehy Wanderers, but we didn't, you know, we didn't survive long enough anyway. Um, could definitely, honestly, what if that slot's just Bright Steel formation? That could be the card. That could be a lot better. Bright Steel formation does seem pretty sweet. Because that's this is also just a good hit off of War Mother's Call. Because you know, even though it's a play trigger, it doesn't matter. You know, it also triggers when you attack. So that that could be a cool. That could be a cool card. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, maybe try. Maybe we need to try bright, bright steel formation. I did like the weirding stones. I think the weirding stones were really good. I did like that quite a bit. Um, I, you know, I don't think we had like. 
Okay, our deck's not one of the best decks. Okay, like this is like a, a tier two, tier three deck. Um, probably like a tier three deck. And, um, and you know, we, we kind of need to get a little bit lucky. And we certainly weren't. Um, to be able to win. But yeah, I think I think She Who Wanders can go. I think it's it's been it's been a pretty bad card a lot. I don't, you know, we've played this deck like three times now. She Who Wanders has not looked good ever. Well, I mean it has like once or twice, but there's been a lot of times where it has not looked good. Bright Steel Formation it can uh, do a lot more for us, I think. So I I don't think I don't think it needs more one drops. What's up, Modib? I don't think the one drops are going to be impactful enough. I don't. No, I, I don't think we need more one drops. They're so bad with War Mother's Call, and I think the three is enough. Yeah, and formation costs less than Wanderer. That's definitely nice. Um, that's definitely nice. Are elite decks even viable above silver? I mean, I guess it depends on the deck, but I mean, I think. I think with Demacia, you're you're better off not focusing on on elite heavy. Um, I don't think that if you're playing like a heavy Demacia deck, I don't think the Battlesmith is and uh, trying you know trying to use Battlesmith is really the best kind of Demacia decks. Um, you know, playing Demacia decks, you just want for your two drops, you just want War Chefs and Bright Steel Protector. Um, you know, you just want that kind of cards and like having some elites, definitely good. But then you know you want like your Laurent Protégé, and, you know, whatever champions you're using, Redeemer's good, Sergeant's good, you know, then obviously your Bannerman, of course. Um, but, I mean, I just don't think, and then, you know, your Swiftwing Lancers and your Bannerman, you just don't need to, like, just solely focus on on Elites, even though you can put, you know, play Elites, but, and Demacia is certainly good, and you can play some Elites, but not just, not make it a, a focus of the deck. I don't see. I just don't feel like judgment ever really works, but maybe maybe it does. Some I mean, because like I mean, you're behind. They attack you with a bunch of stuff. You have like your one thing that you block with, and then you judgment. I mean, you're just you know if they ever have you know if they have interaction. Because the thing is, the thing about this kind of deck is you're not playing threats early where they use their interactions. Like they're not using their bounce spells or anything else early, and so and they're just kind of waiting. For, like all their removal is like like they're gonna have all their removal in hand on that turn and so like if it's like whenever you do judgment um like they'll a lot of people will be ready for it um but i'll just, i'm gonna keep trying the deck some more uh gonna gonna try bright steel formation instead of she who wanders um yeah, I definitely want to try Bright Steel Formation. Um, yeah, I mean, I could see playing one Harsh Winds. I definitely could see that. I, I do like I think I like Harsh Winds more than Judgment. Um, because yeah, like that that can help like that you know help you survive that turn. It's just you're basically spending six mana to gain you know what like eight life or so on average. It's a lot of mana, but you know we do ramp, so there is that we do get to ramp. Um, but yeah, I could definitely see playing a harsh winds. There's there's times like even like after you're kind of stabilizing when you're playing, you know, when you have like you know two or three creatures out and you're kind of stabilizing, that a harsh winds is a wonderful draw. So I, I do I do like having a harsh winds. Um, as far as where to put it in the deck, it may be. I mean, we could take out a Bright Steel Formation, and we could we could just play one Formation and play the Harsh Winds. Um, we go uh, and then. Besides that, we can take out one of the five drops. You know, we have there's the twelve five drops. You can go to eleven. Um, 
and be pretty fine. I'm just not sure which one. You know, Lancer looks like the, the one that you'd probably want to take out, but then again, Lancer... In this deck that doesn't really have much other removal, Lancer can act as a removal for us. Could see taking out Averroes and Sentry. At least one of them. That's a really card bad... Uh, yeah. It's a really bad card to draw late. It doesn't... We can't play it and play Catalyst, so it, do, it hurts half of our ramp. I mean, I could see going with, you know, not, you know, not playing Averroes and Sentry and playing, you know, kind of Harsh Winds, Judgments, getting the fourth one drop. We've talked about playing like an Omen Hawk or two in here because because one drops are just much more valuable because you can play the one drop and still a Catalyst. Yeah, I mean, Sentry usually does just get cleared up by Avalanche and stuff too. Maybe, maybe that's the thing that we're supposed to do is, is play one drop. It's not worth it to play Unscarred Reaver, is it? As a one drop? Not a whole lot of copies, just like, you know, one copy or whatever. Could it survive longer and block better? No, those are all those are all uh, things to think about. Um, but yeah, those of y'all watching on YouTube, kind of had a longer outro here. Let me know what you think. Um, and yeah, say, well, you're going to try the harsh instead of sentry. Okay, yeah, yeah, do that and let me know. Let me know how that feels. Um, you know, let me know if, if that feels rough taking out the two drop. Um you know, yeah, let me know how that plays. But definitely want Bright Steel Formation at the top end at the very least. All right, we got one more deck here today. And the deck that I've been super excited to play all day, the Draven Ezreal Aggro. We're going to be fooling some opponents. It's going to be sweet. Um, but uh, first, uh, those of y'all watching on YouTube, uh, yeah, also hit that like button. Besides, let me know what you think of the deck. But uh, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you for the next video.